Hey, welcome back. I'm Chris, and today you might want to watch this video before you buy a used PlayStation 3 controller. Let's do this real quick. Now, I bought this. The thing's not really working. I'm going to take it apart, clean it, and, well, I'm going to see what we can find. I know it's not going to be pretty. I've taken apart these controllers before, and they're pretty easy to take apart, and they do get pretty disgusting inside, even despite the improvements that they've made with them. And really, all you have to do on the back of it, there's five screws you take off, and once you take those off, you kind of just pry it up from the back here, well, from the bottom back, whatever you want to call it, from right here, right behind the joysticks. You pry up a little bit there. It could be a little bit tricky the first time you do it. You just go slow, and then you're going to slip it over the, well, you could call them trigger buttons, whatever you want to call them. And then the next step you want to do is definitely disconnect the battery. Don't just yank on the wires. Try to pull right on the white connector part itself. Otherwise, if you yank the wires out in the battery, well, you're going to be SOL. Now there's one more screw holding the board in and we're going to undo that. Now be careful you don't accidentally pull the wires out for the rumble pack controller parts. You know what I mean? The motors in there. You, you don't want to yank those out because then you're going to be soldering them back in. Now, I'm definitely going to clean up this controller the best I can. I like to use a toothpick to get in all the crevices and such and then use a cotton swab. A cotton swab may not be the best thing because you get little bits of cotton everywhere and I tend to use isopropyl alcohol but if you're going to use that uh, definitely be careful and test it first because sometimes alcohol can really uh, mess up plastic and mess up rubber and stuff so definitely be careful with that. There is some nastiness going on inside here. I can see like hairs stuck to everything. I hope those are knuckle hairs. Now there's two clips on each rumble motor. You wanna be careful not to break anything because well, that's not really not what we're planning on doing here. There is probably a bunch of skin and Doritos and who knows what else inside here. Almost tempted to send this to a lab and see what they find traces of. I don't wanna know. It's pretty disgusting, it's pretty gross. And once you have this part off, the next part that's the main critical part is the connection in between the board and this little kind of like ribbon cable that really goes to all the buttons. That connection tends to mess up a little bit. It tends to make the controller act just a little bit crazy. Sometimes I just flip this black piece around and you're good to go. Sometimes I gotta replace that black spongy piece. You could replace it with anything that you have. Otherwise you could buy a new replacement piece for it if you do so wish. But that's usually the culprit for all the controllers that I've tried to fix. Now this necessarily isn't a tutorial on how to go ahead and, well, fix this. It's just what I've done in the past. It's worked for me. Some controllers, oh, they were too far gone to where it didn't work at all. So definitely do this with caution. Do it at your own risk. I'm not taking any responsibility if you should happen to break your controller. Just putting it out there. That's my disclaimer for today. Now, I've also had it where the little pieces of wire on the triggers tend to break on me and then you can't obviously use the trigger. It's a pain in the butt. I replace it with other things. And then once you have everything cleaned up, well obviously it's time to put it back together. Now remember, don't force anything. The triggers have kind of like little plastic guides that they slide into. Don't force stuff because it should fit together nice and easy. Just take your time, go slow. All right, that should work. Should be in business. <sighs> Time to put the rest of it back together. Uh, another thing too is don't forget to put the battery back in. I've done that before, put it all back together and, oh, wait a minute. It's silly, I know. And then when you're putting this part back on, just kinda get it over the triggers first, get everything seated, and work your way back. All right, and it's time to go test it out, and hopefully that solves your problem. I mean, sometimes you gotta go back and clean it up again, and then sometimes the controller's just too far gone. But I wish you the best of luck. I think I've done enough rambling today, so I think we're pretty much done for today. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, before I forget, if this is your first time here, definitely consider subscribing. There's a lot of different videos I do, but mainly DIYs, how-tos, photography, stuff like that. I mean, I tear down whatever. I'm not afraid to take something apart and figure out how it works, even if I break it in the process, my cameras included. So anyways, I'll see you on the next one.